G'day everyone. Ah, where to start? Questions, questions, questions. Pretty crappy meeting at um, Ramwick on Sunday. Southerly wind seemed to have created absolute havoc uh, with, the, with the times and with the way races were run. Uh, certainly a big disadvantage to be running into the headwind from races. Uh, having a look, sorry, the easiest way to talk about this is the southerly sort of hits from this angle, obviously nearly straight across here. So if you're running into it, mile 1,400, it's um, 1,400 not as bad, sort of hitting you in the side, but mile or further, uh, mile 18, 2,000, you're certainly running into that headwind heavily. You get a bit of protection across, especially like the, on the fence, you're getting protection from the, the runners with cover and then getting blown up the straight. So very different from the chutes as opposed to the 1,600 and 2,000 metres. Really strange lead times and a lot of weird things went on so i'll try and talk about it all decipher it all but definitely treating shoot races very differently to mile races and above when you're looking at things like bias um definitely an advantage to have a bit of cover from that mile 2000 meters section a little bit different because of the way races were run uh, but that's how you would treat them normally. There was a really fast run 2000 as well. So it was a bit of a mixed bag, a um, bit of dissecting to do, but um, I'll get into it. Any questions, as I said, make sure you uh, send them through anytime you want on any races that I'm covering or future races probably makes it easier. Any other questions about bias, whatever as well, there are a couple I didn't see an email or two, which I'll get to. But um, apart from that, I'll get stuck into the races. Race one was a two-year-old, 1,000 metres. Uh, was it 1,100? 1,100. So it was a shoot race. I'll get rid of the map now. Um, shoot race to start the day. They actually went out quite fast here and came home slow. So this was a pretty normal, like a standard run race from the shoot. I don't think the wind sort of affected, as you see later in the day, they went out really slow. So a few few races to start the day, two 1100s, then we got a mile and a, a really fun, funnily run 2000 into the wind. But uh, the rest of the races were run pretty slow. They started out feeling normal to start the program. I'll just make sure that this is not going to blow everyone's head off. Turn the volume right down on the computer sound. Where is that going to go? <laughs> Hello. roll. Where are you? Where are you showing? No one does it. Multiple screens. No, that's good, isn't it? Where'd you go? Come back. All right. Uh, great organisation. All right. First race of the day. Two-year-olds. Gaze was expected to cross from the outside draw here. And that's not the race. That's the race. All right. Gaze horse. Command approved, was expected to cross in the wide gate. Certainly did that, ran along a bit quick. These two horses, command approved and, what was it called, hard to say, both had a bit of racing and probably raced a bit flat here. It's safe to say they uh, probably both overdid it up front and this horse was really well prepped. Russian Conquest, who sits just behind them. Really nice horse going forward. Certainly a player when it comes to the Magic Millions, I would imagine, just love his... Racing pattern, he can settle just behind speed. He's got to turn a foot. He wins the race here for mine. So these two horses are certainly um, not not bad horses, talented horses. But coming towards the end of their preparation, I'd say Russian Conquest moves into the race really quickly, wins the race from the six to the 400 and puts them away. He's sort of here, shows his acceleration, gets away from the horses that were around him in the run that had similar nice runs. These two are exposed set too fast a tempo 
puts them away and beats the rest comfortably. The only horse to really run on. And it, it's, it's an interesting one. Uh, one of the emails I got was, was it hard to make ground wide during the day? It was interesting to see these horses get off the fence. I know it was a shoot race we talked about, so not as bad. But as we go on, it does look like it was difficult to make ground down the outside. A lot of that may have been tempo related. I, I would say most of it tempo related. A lot of the horses that were forced wide were forced wide against slow tempos and basically sort of sprinting from the eight to the two. They were cactus by the time they got here anyway, I would say. So maybe that played a bigger part, uh, saving ground and then making your run helps against slow tempos. So I would say most of it was tempo related. But this horse, strong through the line, sort of well, it was out on its feet a little bit late, I would say. And I wouldn't be surprised if there was more to come from this horse. But really professional performance expected from that stable. And uh, just a really solid effort all around. As again, this is what you'd, what you'd expect from this stable. Second horse, Nick Cat, pretty solid. Another horse that's hard fit, chalailed okay. Why a wealthy investor was pretty one pace. Narnia no, wasn't a bad effort. I thought it was okay on debut. Uh, this horse with the white nose got to the middle of the track. It was a solid run. Mills was okay. Um, very well found in the market, these hawks, horses. They just kept really safe. Uh, very strange that uh, it was noted that Mills went up shorter than Russian Conquest, which is really weird considering what this horse had shown, not at the not only at the races, but back at the trial since. This horse was an interesting run back in the field. Is it called Monastery? Um, when the race was all over, sorry, I'll just check. What, what I don't even got very, going very late, we run and see again. So Monastery, I thought, was, was a horse worth having another look at, especially if it went back in grade to the provincials or something like that. It's a horse that I thought was worth keeping note of, just never really took part. And when the race was all over, uh, did something that, that not many others in the race were doing. I think the form will be okay. It's certainly time and everything really strong. Uh, I'll be very confident that the winner's a nice horse and, and can go forward. And I wouldn't be surprised if there's other form come out of the race as I said, sort of the second and third favourites are probably getting towards the end of their preparation, but there were a few others that were sort of on the way up. But definitely um, Russian Conquest, Narnia, and this horse, Monastery, back in the pack, worth keeping an eye on from the first race. Uh, what have I done with this? Punishing my other screen is like 14 times the size of this one. And... Um, Makes life difficult with uh, viewing on it, but I have to use a small screen and then here we go. So, all right, race two, highway handicap. This race has again run pretty honestly. They've, they've gone out pretty quick and, and come home pretty solid as well. So we're pretty confident that they, the horses up on speed here have, have done a good job. Um, once again, it's pretty easy to default to the, the horses up the top of the weights of these highways. They tend to always run well. Um, certainly not many knocks on them, that's for sure. And, and invariably, you know, it's a bit of a, uh, a class prevails kind of situation, no doubt. But um, it uh, seems to sort of happen more often than not. And here it is again here. Uh, Casino Lord went out favourite Just a horse that tends to find trouble And that's due to its racing pattern Does that again, runs well again uh, The horses I liked in the race with Summer Rain and Air Marshal ran quite well Tags is the other one I liked And it went disgracefully um, Horses to note in the race I thought Cat Gully Red was a good effort Down the outside after being dragged out of the race Early um, we'll have a look at Casino Lord Midsummer Rain. I thought its first up run was really good and missed and, and definitely ready now. It was the run of the race here for mine. Anathol put it all together and a solid win. Definitely don't want to knock it too much. Airs Marshall uh, went as well as it could. Yeah, nothing too bad back in the pack. I would expect this form to certainly hold up in, in similar grade. So the ones to watch here, firstly, Cat Gully Red's 
out here. Um, it, it ends up well back in the pack and it's, it gets home down the outside. So it's a horse I want to keep an eye on. Really honest horse and, and a horse when it draws a gate and, and has everything in its favour, it sort of runs up to its form. So I would expect, you know, with a few things falling into place in the near future for Cat Gully Red, there's a race in it soon. Um, so Cor goes to the front to the nines. This is Midsummer Rain. Anathol on the outside of this runner here. So in the Australian Bloodstock Colours, uh, what's this thing called? Air Marshal, every possible. So here we see Cat Gully Red. Still getting dragged back, is it? Or is that it there? I think it's even further back, to be honest. Um, so this is it here. White Cat, you can see it there, just being forcibly dragged out of the race. Tags back on the inside. Here was the horse I was interested in. Casino Lord back on the inside. This was the right place to be. As you can see, they sort of winner, second horse, third, fourth. Tags is quite disappointing for mine, even though it did get a little bit keen after dragged out. And this is the horse that sort of beats that pattern of everyone else's. So drag back from a wide draw, gets to the outside, which, as I said, if you've got to say that one area was difficult to make ground in, this was it out here. I might as well keep watching Cat Gully Red at this point. Is fit and sort of near peaking fitness, but I thought this effort was as good as any of the others back on the inside and may have been missed a bit more than others. It, it's a horse that certainly does need to draw a gate, but when it does draw a gate, it can settle closer in the run. And uh, even though it's sort of beaten a pack of horses there really late, it was in the worst part of the track. I wish it had sort of run seventh or eighth uh, rather than fifth. Anyhow, back to the main part of the race, we've got, uh, the winner, Anathol, second horse here, uh, Midsummer Rain, who's probably in the worst position. These horses finish out the backs of core and to the nines. They get beat seven and a half and 11. So a good sign that the the horse in the outside leader position fights on really well here. Uh, Anathol had the cold sit on its back the whole way. This horse, uh, Air Marshal, runs through, runs fourth, and Casino Lord has a bit of bad luck and, and comes through late flashing to run third. I do think this is the best horse in the race, Midsummer Rain. There's no doubt. Had a really long break. Uh, first up run was pretty solid. This run was far superior to that. But love that she's got a little dash even from that bad position. As we said, those horses that raced outside are, are dropping out. Um, and she's kicking on. Anathol just gets past the Casino Lord. Unlucky as it always can be. Air Marshal, nice with a gap behind it, can go to one of these and be consistent again or can go back in grade or to the country and be competitive again. There's nothing else I could really find. Smuggler's Bay was okay. Another horse that I expected to do more and was out in this part of the track, but Cat Gully Red sort of goes past it. Um, not easy to uh, decipher its run, whether it was disappointing or not. Maybe it can improve. It was only off a 60-day-odd break. So... Uh, first four across the line all find themselves in similar grade. Again, next start, they can be certainly competitive. But I think Midsummer Rain is the one with the upside and the one that's capable of finding a little bit easier run next time and probably being dominant over these sorts of horses. Cat Kelly Red might be the value. Uh, race three. Smaller field. Really weird betting in race three. Uh, you had... I thought it was a weird race on paper, but the horse that had all the form had excuses last starting better grade and had to start favourite was Kerwin's Lane. I know it had the synthetic hoof filler and that does scare me as much as anyone in the world, but a horse that was always going to appreciate a small field because it's got to turn a foot to get itself out of trouble if it needs to. Um, can settle, you know, in the first four or five in the run in a big field, so a small field was never going to really worry it. It had a lot of ticks there were a lot of boxes and very strange that it was so soft in the market. I think it was something like $3 out to five, five fifty maybe in places and runs well. Wheelhouse was really well backed, which wasn't surprising. Certainly has every chance here. Um, but Curl's Lane was really dominant very late and I thought its, its effort was very good and can certainly measure up in this or a little bit harder straight away. The ones out the back, they just never were put into the race at all, and they all sort of sprint from the eight to the two, um, all lacking fitness. South Pacific, our candidate, criminal code, very difficult to sprint hard from 800 forward 
um, 800 is sort of to the line, especially when you're struggling for fitness. Those slow tempos really drag the guts out of you when you've got when especially when they take off early, and that's what's happened here. They've sort of gone out. Um, they're 10 lengths below average to the 800, only 5.9 average from the 600. So they've made up four lengths in you know between the eight and the six, and then still come home seven and a half above. So 11 and a half above average the last uh, 800 metres makes it nearly impossible, makes it beyond impossible for those horses to make ground at the back. So forgiving of these horses, number one, South Pacific, our candidate and criminal code, just pretend they weren't in the race and it was a barrier trial for them. And we'll concentrate on the ones that were put into the race. And really nothing too surprising here. If you didn't have the synthetic hoof filler, uh, I would expect this to go exactly the way it did. Just the betting was the sort of surprise. Uh, Five Kingdom always wanted a sort of more truly run race. I didn't think it was ever really going to happen. Uh, you can't blame the jockey. The horse stuck on well. If they had gone a little bit quicker, I still think it wouldn't have finished much closer. It actually went better than I thought it would. The slow tempo probably allowed dynamic impact to settle a bit closer and to finish a bit closer over the mile. I'm a big worry, a query of this horse over a mile, especially in this grade going forward. Uh, Solar Apex raced up outside the leader, which is not the easiest place to be, but they do go pretty slow. So I'm not um, going to give them a huge bonus for, for cutting through the wind. Wheelhouse, absolutely perfect position. Kerwin's Lane, pretty solid, perfect. And these three, as I was saying, they, they sort of try to turn it up from the 800 and they can't get into the race. So uh, this is where it's, it's game on here. You can see they've already dropped the bit they're chasing the ones up front trying to get into the race before these ones have even really turned it on. The two horses that have the perfect runs sort of pair off a little bit in a minute. These guys see, as you can sort of hold their spot, they've held their own up to this position and then drop off late, which is what you expect. And these two, which have had the perfect runs, sprint hard. Nothing really visually looks like it's happening too much, but they are going quick, all of them. And you see a couple pop late because of that. And this guy's like extending through the line. You know, if they had it gone another 100 metres, he probably wins by, what did he win by? 0.28 of a length, he probably wins by two or three, the way it looks. Uh, he was the only one really building through the line in the race. Wheelhouse looked like he just about peaked on his run, no knock on him. And the third horse is not one to really sprint. It's one that would have sort of kept going at that distance. So definitely no knock on the first three. That's as good as Wheelhouse can go. I think that's as good as Kerwin Lane can go, but there is upside to it. And it was probably the one most affected by the speed. If they'd have gone a bit quicker, I think it would have won by further. And uh, Five Kingdoms going really well. Hard fit horse, no surprises there. Dynamic Impact, I think, needs to go back in grade, back in distance. And Solar Impact, I don't think, measures up to that grade. Uh, the three out the back, as we talked about, just forgive them. Just for teachers treat it as a barrier trial going forward, in my opinion. Um, what else have we got? Race four. Do I have any questions or whatever? Let's have a look. We have a question, staking question. Uh, how do you determine what your outlay will be? Is it purely based on overlays in your price versus the market or a Combination. Can I put this in here? Let's try. So this is the question I was asked. How do you determine when to bet and what your outlay will be? Is it purely based on overlays in your price versus the market or a combination of price overlays and confidence in how the race will be run? Um, in my own betting, is it very different to, say, tipping or, or sending out selections? Because... Um, well, it's, it's difficult. You, you basically, to send a selection out, you want as many boxes to be ticked and as few variables as possible because it's one, it's not your money and, it, you know, the, the, you, it makes more sense like for everyone. Uh, the consistency factor is what you want in that sort of a service, whereas betting yourself, you're going to take more risks, understanding that, that things are more marginal and there may be fewer variables. So determining what to bet for a... a uh, a suggested play or whatever you want to call it, uh, I'm going to try and find a, a races with as few variable, variables as possible or extreme value. I want more value 
or I want less variables. And they're the two main things I probably look for. Um, betting race to race myself or, you know, during a meeting, uh, very, very different, but certainly always based on overlays to your price. The, the beauty of during the day, things change and you can get a much stronger handle on things and you can sort of shore up your prices, change them from, say, 9 o'clock in the morning on race day or, or Wednesday or Thursday for a Saturday meeting. Uh, that's a pretty... Um, soft answer i would say but i'll probably tackle that in more detail at another time it's probably too hard a question to answer in a short period um here so i'll i'll it's a good question but i'll tackle it later in more depth race four midway 2000 meters this is the weirdest one of the day they go out 11 12 lengths above average um even quicker, sorry, they went nine lengths above average to the 800, kept going to the 600. So they never had a break at all. 11.7 11 lengths above average, come home five lengths below. So when I say average, that's for this class and, and distance at, at this track. And that's ridiculously quick, especially when you consider they were charging into that subtly at the same time. So no doubt it's not a surprise that Microna, Al Sahara, Avion Fury, and Made by Khan were beaten and beaten comfortably here. Complete forgives for all those on speed. They do run fast time, and no surprise that the, the horses that kind of run over it all makes sense. This race, uh, just a bit of a butchering from those on the leaders early in the race who all wanted to kick up and find a position running into the headwind, which didn't look like. It would be like this on paper, pardon me, um, early. But you see they're all sort of kicking up and it sort of set up the rest of the day where no one did this, where they, they determined, you know, you couldn't work like this into the wind and expect to have anything left at the end. So it, as it turned out, this was the last of the fast run races and everyone sat up for the rest of the day. But you can see uh, Made by Khan, Avion Fury, Microna, Al Sahara, they all finish out the back after working hard here early. Uh, who's the next one? Sepulcher. It's actually probably not a bad run as it was sort of ridden along early in the race. Uh, who have we got? The winner's out the back here. It's flying. Cunary interest jumped better today too, which was interesting to note. Apache Bell, really hard fit. Legend has it, looks like it all. Run 48,000 metres. This is it back here on the inside in the Lesbridge colours or the Southern Legend colours. Um, support we talked about. Rebel Run was a bit disappointing, I thought. Uh, entitled to run into the race a bit more. Maybe needs it wet, uh, ideally. You can see they all sort of get off the bit here. And I actually didn't mind the, the run of this leader. Even though it was beating six lengths, it, it just had no hope the way the race was run. And to be only beaten six and a half and, and seven, I didn't mind the runs of the two leaders. And I think they could turn it around if given time to get over this run and, and run in similar grade, I could forgive them instantly. Legend has it sneaks up the fence. This is pecuniary interest climbing over heels. The only horse in the race with an actual turn of foot, really. Maybe Rebel Rama. And again, Rebel Rama looked to be run into the race out wide here and another sort of candidate to say that maybe it wasn't that easy to to run on from out wide but i still think its history says that you know it prefers a bit of a soft ground it looks like it's sort of knocked up if anything and the tough one pace is all all ran well power of attorney looks ready to go now as well uh, not really super positive out of its run it was certainly pace assisted and took forever to wind up but um fitness wise it, it was due to sort of peak today um, off this run and I think that's that's how it'll play out and I like the way it was sort of let find itself back in the field and worked home without too much pressure so it's a, certainly a, a fitness building run that'll bring it to its top next start no real surprises here everything sort of ran the way you would have expected maybe Annabelle's horse was a little bit disappointing but couldn't really find it off its previous form anyway it looked pretty similar to this one paced um, honest type that's going to struggle to put races away. 
Power of Attorney is actually quite good late there. So pecuniary interest going really well. Apache Bell, honest, but had every possible chance. Legend has it very, very one-paced. Um, we'll need a lot of luck to win a race, I'd imagine. Sepulcher was a, probably a horse that could dominate a race from the front if they weren't going as hard as they did here. And if it found those conditions, can certainly run really well, whether it's at this grade or at the provincials. And I think made by Khan and Avion Fury are going well enough uh, to be forgiven for that run as well. If they find another race where they can lead or dominate. On to race five, Bisley Workwear, 1,800 metres. This was a, a really slowly run race where they rip home. It was a strange race on paper where there were a lot of queries over horses that were going to be up on speed sort of going up in grade, up in distance. I really wanted to see always on show, boot forward and, and try and dictate, and they were happy to take a sit from that inside draw. Um, Rousseau looked a, a distance query, and that's certainly prevalent after this race. Nifla ran really well. Zagalo was extremely well backed, and it was probably a certainly beaten here, to be honest. Uh, one of the better runs of the day, I would imagine. Uh, Dakuri has a nice turn of foot and that was probably suited here. We've got a nice ride considering the way the race was run and its attributes. So, which is a nice turn of foot, just got past Niffler, who I thought was probably cuddled a bit too much. Uh, Greek hero, appreciated the slow tempo sprinted nicely, ran well. Um, Zagalo will show Atlantis and uh, Atlantis was a bit of a, a, a pass mark at best. PK's legacy sort of made a short run and it was a bit soft late and, Carp fever, Travis, she's all in. We're all a bit plain. Uh, just having a look at the replay. Nothing much happened. So she's all in's allowed to stride forward. They grab hold of this horse always on show, which is the horse I wanted to see ridden more forward. Cup fever was change of tactics to be ridden more forward. So no, uh, no surprise to see it sort of work. So ends up getting a perfect run. Niffler ends up getting a perfect run. Travis in a good spot. Always on show. Gets the nice run through. So no excuses for it whatsoever. Uh, sorry, I do want to go back at the start. Pardon me. I want to show Zagalo. So it's in the green. Where are you, Zagalo? In front nearly, early. And look where it ends up. I'm not saying it's a horse that's blessed with huge early pace, but look where this horse ends up in a minute. After basically jumping in a position where it could certainly have held here, I think. Um, maybe a run short or something they were worried about, but look where it ends up back in here, over racing. Uh, winners all pulling basically, they're going that slow. Look at all of them on pace and Zagalo's back in the middle here in the ugliest spot you've ever seen in your life, stuck behind the worst hot horses you could possibly be following. A complete nightmare for Zagalo backers. Dakuri's here on the inside and ready to pounce, does get the inside run, which is handy. Probably wins at the race. Is saying Niffler just, I don't know why cuddled you, but on a slow tempo, just go, you know, like, um, sorry, this is, Niffler here coming up four way, just go, 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 put them away. You're not on a horse with a, a turn of foot. You're on a horse that looks like a bit of a grinder. Last start was evident of that and a bit of a cuddle here. I think it probably cost it the race, to be honest. Um, but to Curie, you know, hard to knock it. It's, 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 it's shown a nice turn of foot and got through the line okay. As we see, there's Zagalo. Concentrate on Zagalo in the green knowing that it's already sort of given up a lot of ground by being dragged out of the race. It's pulled. And now look at it, checking, 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 having to bustle its way into the clear, can't build any momentum. All these horses have had clear running and been able to build a momentum or save ground. This horse hasn't been able to do any of that and strongest through the line. So I think it was a good thing beaten Zagalo. The way the race was run, I think Niffler probably should have won, but... Uh, was given a bit too pretty of a ride considering the slow tempo and Greek hero and everyone comes through. It's not, not a great race to be hanging your hat on, but I think 
most of these runners are going well, like going as well as they can go. So Dukuri's going as well as it can. I think Niffler's a horse on the up going really well. Rousseau going well but needs to go back in distance. Always on always on show needs to be ridden more aggressively. Really one paced again. Uh, Greek Hero, if it finds the right race, can, can do something similar to this. Uh, Outlandis is obviously going quite well. A slow tempo, not really ideal for it. And Zagallo, nearly a moral beaten there. Ready to win. So even though there's only a length and a half of, between the first uh, seven there, I think they're all going quite well, which is not normal that I'll be as positive about a race that's got that little spread of margin in it, but it is a really slowly run race and they've all come home quite nicely. So um, the winners come home 11.3 lengths above average. So it's hard to go much quicker than that, to be honest. Race six. Lady of Luxury, one of the few horses on the day I actually gave a good chance to. Very well back, $4.40 favourite. Uh, I was backing for Selby Rose, which I thought was very strange. Didn't look like it was ever going to get control of this race here, which is what it wanted or needed. Off a pretty average run too, so it had to improve. Uh, they do go... Well, I think pretty stand. I'm going to call it pretty even tempo. They go out, you know, a little bit slow and come in a little bit quick. But for the day, it looks um, a pretty even tempo. Not much between them all. I'll have to sort of dissect them a little bit. I thought there was a really poor ride on one horse in the race that's ready to improve significantly. And there were a few that are a bit pack chasey that probably um, – have found their mark to a certain degree. Lady of Luxury certainly flying. Didn't think it was an exceptional effort. I thought it was a really good ride, especially from the inside draw. I say hello, I think it was a, a really good return. Have a good look at its run. Steel Diamond just pack chasing a little bit, but going well and, and really reliable. Probably a bit like the horse I talked about earlier. Uh, what's it called? In the highway. Um Cat Gully Red that just needs to draw a gate, needs to have everything really fall into its lap, and then you can rely on it to do what it does every start. So it's really consistent. It's got good attributes, hits the line, but needs everything ticks, to, ticks in all boxes to to get the job done, I think, at this stage, which is a bit of a shame. It looked a bit better than that at one point, but that's uh, all it seems to have going for it currently. So at the start, leave me some is taken out of the race, taken back. And in like me, is it? Just taken back. This horse here, number three, what was it? Black colour sort of taken back, but ends up finding a spot anyway. The horse that I thought was really poorly ridden is Lady Banff. I know they had the blinkers off and they, they talked about riding it a bit quiet here, but you look at the spot it finds. And he's just really timid. Instead of holding his position here, he gets laid on a little bit by Duggan. But you know, you've still got to have a, you've still got to be able to hold your spot. And he doesn't. He's always just sort of that half length behind instead of holding that position on the back of Selby Rose and ends up getting in trouble here. Lady of Luxury gets up inside. You can see the horse is travelling in restricted room and getting its head up and not happy where it is. It's on the back foot here where it should be on the front foot. So if it had got the back of that horse and sort of been able to get out into the middle, ideally different race where it's now stuck in behind. Lady of Luxury has now got the run that it would have had. It ends up winning the race. This horse is now just starting to build revs, looking at the grey and gets to the line quite nicely. You can see its action totally changes when it gets out into a bit of room. And again, not saying it was a, a certainly beat or anything like that, but I think it's a horse that's ready to improve and that run should top it off. Uh, this, that, Sorry, that horse was, I say, hello, that was dragged back early. So it, it, important to have a look at it at the start because it can hold the spot. You see that it grabs hold of it noticeably trying to slot in. Not saying this is a bad ride. I'm just saying that next time out, it could certainly race a little bit handier. 
does get a bit keen when it finds that position outside Lady Banff and then he's sort of forced back when Leave Me Some comes around it, finally starts to settle and work into the race. This is I Say Hello. And I thought the run was really good, especially considering the horse was first up, had to make a long run from back in the field and did a pretty good job of it, whereas Steel Diamond sort of sat a bit longer, peeled off the back of it and was never really going to get past it, I don't think. So I'd say I Say Hello was a, a, a superior run to Steel Diamond, trying to assess them going forward. Uh, Lady of Luxury just got a little bit better ride, had the race fitness and no knock on it at all. Really solid win. But these two horses do have a bit of upside and this horse certainly, just forgive that last preparation, has a bit of something about it that can that certainly continue to improve into its preparation. Lady Banff, the runner back in the field that I thought was giving her a really poor ride. Leave me some, wasn't a bad run. Had to take off early and just needs easier. Uh who else have we got there? Miss Baltimore is sane, probably just needs a little bit easier. And sentimental was only fair after having the perfect run in the race. Uh, couldn't have finished an inch closer, I don't think. Race six. That was race six. Race seven. Summer Cup, another really slowly run race. Uh, made it made it a bunch finish and made it, you know, these are all pretty one-paced horses. The horse that sort of was given the best run, as in didn't spend any petrol from the 800-metre mark, um, was just had that little bit of burst and that's all that got it clear. It wins by three quarters of a length. Just a really well-timed ride, whether that was the plan or not. The horse obviously improved, but just not exposed until the others at all sort of spent all their pennies as we sort of said and then it was able to just sort of put the race away don't really know what to do with the race these sort of horses will keep clashing over the next few weeks and until some new blood sort of comes in onto the scene better horses coming into autumn preparations and things like that these are the sort of horses that will battle each other in similar races so probably worth dissecting a little bit closer but um I was keen on Stockman. I wanted them to run along a little bit more, but still thought the horse was there to do more and whether he wants to sting out more, same as Polly Gray here. He was still a little bit disappointing. The horse that I thought showed he's absolutely ready now to do something is Attorney. It ran fifth in the race, and it's probably the one that I want to find going forward. Order again did what order again does and found a few bums and flashed a little bit and had that back me next start written all over him. But that's what he does. Polly Gray, sorry, I'm spitting everywhere. Polly Gray did its normal thing and ran really honestly, obviously likes the sting out, but hand, like it, it just an adaptable horse that runs well from anywhere and going really well. And Korea Dearest did what it does. Obviously the tempo against here back in the field, Korea Dearest, but uh, peaked on its run and never really looked like putting the race away. And that's the problem with this horse. It's pattern. Not really sure it runs a strong 2000 either, but um, really slow tempos are hard to gauge horses' um, abilities on. So you can see that the sprint's well and truly on here. Sorry, I'm just going to go back and look at the time of the race. So... Yeah, nine and a half below average to the 800, seven and a half to the, to the six. So they've, they've sprinted up from the 800. And as you sort of said, the win is gone, you know, seven and a half above average. The last 800 metres of the race, it last, no, last uh, 9.9 above the last 800. So they don't sprint home much quicker than that really in, in 2,000 metre races, I wouldn't imagine. Setting their pattern, nothing really happens during the whole race. So said they they do start going here, so they're spending petrol, they're spending petrol, they're spending petrol all before try and catch up again. And as I said, the sort of leaders only sprinted. Fun fact was a bit ordinary, and so was Sky Max. And this is sort of you've got to be uh, soft on them because they did run into that win, but they went so slow. So you win, I thought would be in the finish. I thought it might have a get that run that it got and have a turn of foot and be able to sort of put them away and then you know be there right at the end. Just never really got away from him. You see, like I was saying, this this horse 
Parry sound is in that position where it can sort of just track up and stay on the bit and not have to spend any petrol longer than anyone. So it gets off the back of Polly Gray, gets on the back of So You Win, who drags him all the way up to sort of the 200 metre mark. And it's still here because it doesn't have clear air, it hasn't had to build anything. And it's got that dash to put him away when it sees cleared running here just to put the race away. I think nearly any horse in the race that had that run would have won the race. So I don't want to be super positive on the winner. He's beaten a bunch of horses and he had the right run in the race. But again, these horses are all going to be competitive if they go against each other in similar conditions. I'd say this is the horse that can't beat them. It had the perfect run and I can't see anything better happening for this horse to win a race than what happened on Sunday. Um, wet track ideal for these two, sting out of the ground. This bloke, not really sure, Creodirus, um, a better, a, a faster run race certainly would help it and a, and a draw. It's going well enough to win a race, but a, its pattern is, is a nightmare. This horse will drive you insane order again. And I just think this guy peaked on his run a little bit. Um, widest runner. So again, we sort of said maybe that wasn't the place to be out there. Thought he got home quite nicely. And just want to look at the section. So order again, attorney. So the fourth fastest last 800 of the day, which is a really solid effort and was able to maintain sort of last fastest last eight, six, four and two of the race, which is a good sign that this horse is ready to win, in my opinion, as it did have a bit of upside sort of just looking at its form. It had only had one, two, three, four. That was its fifth run in. Um, had gone up and then back and then up in trip. So I think this horse is probably ready to do its best next time out, similar conditions. Race eight, getting through them, no questions. Loving that. Not loving no questions, but such a long and arduous meeting to get through anyway. Uh, I'll try and do some sort of question only answering live if everyone's interested. Any questions, send them in to me, john at racingwatch.com.au if you want. Info at Racing Watch gets to me as well, or Twitter or Instagram or wherever you want to send me messages. Uh, any questions? Race eight, really slowly run again here. Not huge merit in this, the final 600. So they've gone out slow. They've gone out, uh, so they've gone out slow to the eight, slowed even further to the six, then come home not too great here. So this is a race where I'm looking to be negative. The next two races are races I'm looking to be negative. The next three races are racing I'm looking to be negative. So especially to those that had the soft runs in the right spot. Animate, certainly one of those, has the perfect trail here. Didn't mind his setup. I was surprised that he got out to sort of $18 in the betting. He, he definitely been given two trials positive, blinkers on positive, and ends up getting a perfect run. Sort of just dragged in behind them here. Uh, Tamerlane dragged out of the race. The horse here that probably the most well, most hidden run, people will find it, but the horse that's most ready to improve significantly in the meeting is the horse that missed the start here badly, Shadow Crush. There's a change of tactics to be ridden more forward. It went up in the air at the start there. I'll go back and show it again so it's clear. So there you sort of get his head up and gets squeezed out in the black cap with the dark blue. And black sleeves, he gets dragged out, ends up last in the run with Tamerlane. As I said, that this is a slowly run race. I'm not, I'm not happy with the quality of the race overall as a race where I really want to find horses and really be positive to them. But this horse was trapped in a position that's not good for its um, natural ability. It's sort of a horse that can race up on speed and build off that and, and sprint off a decent tempo. So... For what it does here is we'll keep an eye on it during the run and late in the race. I think, you know, only beaten two and a half and run ninth, it can certainly improve significantly. Animate every possible chance. Ranges outside the leader battles on. Super effort ran. Honestly, I think that's this is it, it's shown everything that it is here. Nick Top leads and even though it was into the breeze, is pretty weak late. 
Love Planet one pace and not suited by slow tempo. Tamerlane gets dragged out and only runs fairly. Kennedy Lane only runs fairly. Paper Warrior, uh, forgive run and impasse, I thought was not bad. We'll have it keep an eye on it too. Weird horse, it just went around huge odds here and I really couldn't figure out why. And even though it runs second last year, I thought it ran a lot better than that. So watching the winner, third, second. And we'll have a close look at Shadow Crush after that. Nothing really happens in the run. They start to wind up very late and dash home. I know it's a slow run race, but there's no real merit in anything that happens. So for this horse to take so long to put Rangers away, who sat outside the leader, is not a real positive. It's a solid effort, but to win on a Saturday in slow time, I'm probably looking to be negative on this winner. I think everything sort of fell in its lap that possibly can and not super strong on the line, even though he eases up. I don't like that the horse sort of drops its head as soon as he does ease up and he's had everything possible in his favour that could possibly ever go right. That's his Christmas. Have a look at Shadow Crush here now. So where was it in the run? It was back on, I was back and wide. So outside him pass. Black here. Gets on the back of Tamerlane. And I think it ran something like fastest last 862 of the race. Even though it ran ninth. You can see it's not a horse that's got a really great dash, but it's it's a it does build its momentum and continue that. So once it's fit, it can race up on speed, build, and hard to get past uh, from anyone that's sort of back in the pack. So I think it's ready to go. Well, next start out of a poor race. Uh, in past, you sort of said, really never took part in the race in the lime green, yellowy colours, whatever they are here on Colourblind. And he sort of sits up on him late. Savory was only fair. I, I thought he was worth gambling on in this race at big odds, and they only both went fair. Love Planet, as you said, sort of one paced, not really suited by the slow tempo. Love Kennedy sticks on and similar one paced, Paper Warrior one paced. Tamerlane's it's just silly price, I think, in that race. Never really going to be in any other position. And even though it was a slow tempo, it was only an average race and it only ran home fairly. When its pattern is that all the time and that the difference between Tamerlane and Shadow Crush is that Shadow Crush doesn't normally race back there and it was only sort of victim of circumstance of what happened in the start had it back in that position. Uh, race nine... The mighty Hollyfield. They go out 12 lengths below average, come home four and a half above, and a really poor race quality here. Looking to be savage on horses in this race if possible. And Hollyfield's come out of two poor races in a, in a row, so has um, two big fari. So when I'm saying that, like you want to be harsh on them, but if they find conditions to suit, which they both did here, I thought. I thought Snippy Fox would be ridden far more aggressively and was certainly the one to beat. My own opinion, I did think the dangers were Hollyfield and Too Big Fari. They were both coming out of poor races, but their setup was really nice here, as in looked like they were going to get soft runs on speed, and that made them dangerous in a race of this nature. So I wasn't surprised by their um, domination of this race simply due to the pattern um, of the race, but be very wary of the form going forward, but it shows that if you're coming out of a weak race there, it is possible you can find a, a race next start that's suitable. It's just um, you've got to be harsher on them. So Hollyfield leads all the way, as I said, goes out really slow. And again, uh, to the 800, they were 10 below. To the 600, they're 12 below. So even though they were going slow, they were allowed to continue and, and go even slower, which is sort of what happened in, in these last few races. It's really hard to explain that no one put any pressure on at any stage. It is a funny time of year with some jockeys around that aren't ideal. There's a number of things I wanted to sort of point out here that are, are really worrying signs. Uh, I liked a horse called Nitride in the race, but it races wide with no cover the whole way. and still runs well beaten 2.7. This horse who misses the start, um, Intuition, only beaten 2.6. Uh, Blesk, who's a, a victim of its racing pattern out the back, Mudgy sort of half didn't finish the course, 
like Duke didn't back up too well either. And Snippy Fox has given one of the worst rides you've ever seen. So there's and only went plain as well, to be honest. So there's just danger signs everywhere here, not just that there's no merit in the time and they don't really ever do anything after having an absolute cakewalk up front. So very strange that Omudji didn't cross. Go back a little bit. I saw that in the stewards' report after that they were told that to lead or sit outside leader, so I don't know why you wouldn't at least have a dig to try and cross Holyfield, why you would be happy to sit outside leader into the wind. Um, not too bad. You're coming out of that 1,400 shoot, but you're still running into the wind here, so I don't know why you'd want to give that out, uh, leading position up to race outside leader. And it was a sort of a miracle that Omudji didn't cross that. He ended up with the 1-1, but he's, now he's dragging back the horses off its head. A uh, very strange ride. If he had it over again, I'm sure he'd give it a dig and and find the position that Holyfield eventually did. But they were going so slow early. Uh, really negative ride. And you'll see he ends up five deep and six and seven wide in the straight. It, it's just a shocker. It's just, you, anyway, it's a car crash. But that happens. Holyfield, all the meantime, is getting an absolute picnic. Too big, Fari, getting the perfect drag behind it. Uh, Katea gets the run up the inside. Intuition and follows it through. Both of them probably flattered performances, but a really slow tempo, and they're not really entitled to run too well. The horse I was talking about, I'm just going to snap back a bit and show you. Nitride, it's it's one that's got the ability to race closer. It's in here in the pink and gets dragged back through the field. Um, continually here it is here, sort of four and five wide, no cover, back in the race, uh, 1400s as far as it wants. Obviously, a slow tempo is not too taxing when you're sitting wide, but there was that bit of wind. And this horse is as strong as, like, finishes on Nippy Fox's heels. Sorry, it goes past Snippy Fox. Just a tragedy that this horse hasn't drawn a gate. It could have dead set lob one of these races at 100 to 1 and um, just continues to run really well with a, a number of things against it, gates, jockeys, all sorts of stuff. So this horse is running extremely well. It is a big red flag over the race, though, and so is the run of intuition who's not been going great. The leaders really do nothing. And if you're going to be positive or negative about them, it's negative because they've both had dream runs up on speed. Okay, this horse went into the breeze a bit, but it was perfectly set up and was just handed the race. This horse was probably in need of the run, but again, on its back and every possible. Blesk got the run through, held up slightly, but it's just Blesk, victim of its racing pattern. And there's so many detractions from the race. Amudji running poorly, Black Duke running poorly, Snippy Fox being absolutely destroyed. And no, no uh, merit in the times at all. So for me, you probably want to be really harsh on Holyfield next time it goes around, unless it finds identical setup, which is nearly impossible. Uh, Nitride just needs to find the right race. Forgiving of Snippy Fox, but it also probably looks like it needs to sting out. It only went fair. Uh, Black Duke definitely didn't back up um, well at all. And Blesk is a nightmare of a horse that needs everything to go its way. Needs a, a track where you can run on, needs tempo on and needs uh, to, you know, a drag into the race. It doesn't have the ability or attributes to overcome slow tempos or maintain long runs, it doesn't seem. So it's a nightmare and that's that race. The last, another shockingly slowly run race, they basically sort of cart up to the 1800, the same, and then start to build, but don't get quicker and then never really get quicker. Um, they sort of run home in even time after going out about 10 lengths below. So it's just a horrible race on paper, uh, class-wise for this level. Um, you've got other problems in the race that Otira never really takes part and just doesn't do a lot, um, whether that's just as well as it can go or whether it had an off day, time will tell. Pentecost, another one that was relatively well found in the betting, was either 2-1 paced or didn't measure up to the class. Uh, and then you've got horses like Casino Kid, Deficit, Remus, who had no luck at all, which should have made the margins even more bunched and nothing sweet about me, who's gifted a lead, absolutely falls in. I'm not going to be too harsh on Caesars Palace, who sat outside it and was 25-1. to 1. Definitely going to be harsh on nothing sweet about me going forward. Um, and 
very, very scared about this race and the form that comes out of it. And I'm going to be more forgiving of the ones that are sort of unlucky and running through the line than those that are weak. So nothing sweet about me and Caesar's Palace roll forward. Why, hey, hey, uh, hey, uh, fall sits three wide. So another knock on the race that the, the favourite sat three wide. I think it had a, a hoof filler or bar plates or something too. It had a bad um, gear change in the race, which was a query. This is the, the couple of horses that I sort of found, Deficit and Remus were both unlucky here. Deficit was to be ridden closer, which it was, but sort of gets in restricted room. And right across the line, you'll see that it picks up again. It's just a nightmare of a horse. It's got a mad flat spot, and they'll only drive you mad and send you broke horses with flat spots. But he doesn't surprise me if they're even more aggressive in a race. Um, he can win. He's going well. He's just a bit of a punish of a horse to, to catch. But you can see the speed come right out of the race here. You can see them all travelling a bit fiercely, if anything, real pack not much over all of them and really nothing takes off look at them they just all sort of they see bowman out on this favor here they all rather grab its back than take off and and get themselves into the race deficits in a spot where it's not in control of its own destiny casino kid in a similar passion remus runs up their backsides as well can't get clean air and the leader's just up the front jogging sprints up it doesn't really when i when i mean that it doesn't really do anything it doesn't go fast at any point so um Slow tempo has aided it because nothing else could sprint either. Like the, it, I know that uh, Caesar's Palace goes past it. It's had a harder run than it, and then it fights back and beats it. But look at them all closing. It's not strong on the line at all. It's just won by act of God. So that is an act of God win. Um, they could run the race another 50 times, I'd say, and that horse won't win the race. Going back, uh, we'll watch Remus Casino. Sorry, we'll watch Remus now first. Thought it could improve here. Just sort of straight up their bums. What you don't want in a slow run race is to have no momentum. And his momentum's halted a few times, goes back to the inside. Starts to build through his gears again, which is, as I said, very difficult to do when other horses have had clear running and hits his top somewhere near the line. Casino Kid, I think probably just got to go back a little bit more. So he's checked there. Casino Kid back on the inside, checked, checks again off Deficit's heels. He's a horse who's probably got a better turn of foot than most here, so he probably would have been suited if he got clear air. He can maintain a sprint. And you see he was sort of building through there, unlucky, hard fit horse. Um, and Deficit, you can see Deficit through the line. was nearly picked up with Casino Kid when it went past it. It's, it's just a really weird horse considering he looked like he was going backwards and doing nothing here then finds it. So he's just got a mad flat spot. He's a nightmare. I think they're the three that are the pick of the lot out of this race. Um, but huge worry over the how this form's going to hold up. And I probably want those horses to go back to midweek or find it really easy races to want to be getting involved in them. The winner, I just, yeah, I just can't be more negative about. 1A was okay, but it had every possible, this horse here. Uh, it had its Christmas as well. At least it sort of half hits the line, whereas these two just don't. Well, it just doesn't. And so many issues with the race. A couple of horses failing. A couple of horses finding rear ends and charging late when the race was over. So, as I said, it can't be more lottery winning than nothing sweet about me. Saw there on Sunday. So there is a bit to find out of the meeting, a lot of negative stuff as much as anything, which is fine. Um, negative is as good as positive going forward, and it all sort of adds up, but you've just got to dissect it. The problem is you had wind and slow tempos, which I sort of did want to talk about slow tempos. So poor races with slow tempos as opposed to fast run races that are poor races. You know the truth pretty much with fast run races because they've all been exposed. They've all gone quick horses that are weak at the end of it or whatever, unless they've had excuses, there's no reason for it. Slow run races, you it's a bit of a guesswork on who had reserves of energy and were unlucky and, and sort of beaten by the tempo. Um, you, you're guessing a lot more with a slow tempo. You've got to rely on your eye through the line and, and other things and, and try and identify 
horses that are one pace that weren't suited by the slow tempo, whereas fast run races, you can see the one pace horses getting over them late and things like that. They're usually the flatted horses. It's um, it's a very different thing. So you've got to be a little bit more careful with slow run, poor quality races because a lot of the merit is hidden. So you've got to be really sure that, that a horse had every chance. It's weak on the line. Other horses around it are all strong uh, compared to it. And that that's sort of what you want to look for if you want to be negative on a horse in a slow run race. Um, whereas a fast run race, it's, it's far more different and you, you sort of, you get all the cards are on the table. Uh, not much is hidden in a fast run race. Yeah. Slow runs, very difficult. So that's about it for this one. Another hour gone out of people's lives. I'll post this up. And as I said, any questions from this meeting, don't be scared to send them in. Any questions uh, about anything, send them through. I'll try and do a few more of these live things during this trial just so everyone gets a bit more of a handle on how and why I do things, and that's kind of the idea of it all. Hopefully, I'll even find a winner in the next few days too. Thanks, guys.